Hello and welcome back. Kamal here with this time another differential equation. It's a nice separable differential equation, so I know what you're thinking. This is no big deal whatsoever. All we have to do is separate the variables and integrate. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So on separating the variables, we do get 1 by y dy equal to dx divided by sine to the 6th power of x plus cosine to the 6th power of x. And now all we have to do is integrate. And on the left-hand side, we do indeed have log y, whereas on the right-hand side, we have some work to do. So let's call the integral i and come up with some solution development for it. It's a very interesting antiderivative problem we have here. So we have i being the integral of dx divided by sine to the 6 of x plus cosine to the 6 of x. And we need some simplification for the trig functions in the denominator. Notice that we can write sine to the 6 of x plus cosine to the 6 of x as sine square x cubed plus cosine square x cubed. So that's the a cubed plus b cubed form we have, and we know exactly how to factorize that. We'll have a plus b, which in our case is sine square plus cosine square. Terribly sorry about that. Much better. Times a squared, which would be sine to the fourth power of x, minus a times b, which of course is sine squared times cosine squared. Then we also need the square of the second term, which would be cosine to the 4 of x. So let me just write that over here. And this simplifies things considerably because sine square plus cosine square is just 1. So that means we're only left with sine to the 4th power of x plus cosine to the 4th power of x minus sine square x times cosine square x. And it would be quite nice if we had a plus 2 sine square cosine square term because then we could just complete the square. And getting that is not difficult at all. We'll just write this as sine to the 4 of x plus cosine to the 4 of x plus 2 sine square x times cosine square x. But to balance that out, that means we, we need negative 3 sine square x cosine square x. And now we can complete the square which means that we have sine square x plus cosine square x, whole thing squared, minus 3 times sine square x times cosine square x. And this thing is, of course, again, just equal to 1. So that means we have 1 minus 3 sine x cosine x whole thing squared. This here is what sine to the 6 plus cosine to the 6 of x evaluates out to. And we could, we could just simplify this further because we have sine x times cosine x, which is one half of sine 2x. So we have 1 minus 3 times a half of sine 2x squared, of course. That means we have 1 minus 3 quarters of sine squared 2x. Okay, cool. Now to make use of this result for our integration problem, we have the integral of dx divided by 1 minus 3 quarters of sine squared 2x. And we can expand by a factor of 4, thereby getting 4 times the integral of dx divided by 4 minus 3 times sine squared 2x. We can now expand the sine square function as 1 minus cosine square. So we have 4 times the integral of dx divided by 4 minus 3 times 1 minus cosine squared 2x. So we have 4 times the integral of dx divided by 4 minus 3, which is a 1, plus cosine squared 2x. We can now expand using the secant function, specifically the squared secant function, which of course had its utility in that it makes a substitution quite obvious. So we have secant square 2x upstairs and secant square 2x downstairs, giving us 4 times the integral of secant square 2x dx divided by secant square 2x plus 1. Now, you guessed it, we'll expand secant square as 1 plus tangent square. So we have 4 times integral secant square 2x dx divided by 2 plus 
tangent square 2x. Okay, cool. So all we need now is a substitution where we're going to let tangent 2x, terribly sorry about that, tangent 2x equal to u, which implies that 2 times secant squared 2x dx equals du. So i here gives us twice the integral of du divided by 2 plus u squared. That means we have 2 divided by root 2 times arctangent u divided by root 2. And 2 divided by root 2 is just root 2. And u here is the tangent of 2x. So that means we have the inverse tangent of 1 by root 2 times tangent 2x. And of course, the purpose of solving the integral was to solve our differential equation. So we'll recall exactly where we had the integral i up here. So we have log y equal to the target integral i. And of course, we also need a constant of integration. So let's just place it on the left-hand side with the y term. So we have c plus log y equal to i meaning that we have c plus log y equal to root 2 times inverse tangent of 1 by root 2 times tangent 2x. And of course, we can now exponentiate everything, giving us e to the c times e to the log y, which of course is equal to, well, e to the c is just another constant, so we'll just call it c. And e to the log y is just y. This equals e to the root 2 times the inverse tangent of 1 half of, no, it, it's 1 by root 2 of tangent 2x. And this implies that y here equals, the reciprocal of c is also just another constant, so we'll call that c as well. So we have c times e to the root 2 times the inverse tangent of 1 by root 2 times the tangent of 2x, which is a pretty cool solution indeed. And before my good friend Zanade Parker comments for me to differentiate this thing to get back our original differential equation, I will leave this as an exercise to you, the viewer in general, and to my friend Zanade Parker in particular, to differentiate this and work our way back to the differential equation which should be a very nice exercise indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the channel, you like the effort I'm putting out, do consider supporting my content on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.